Hi friends, welcome back. So we're doing a movie review today and uh, this is on a documentary called This Is Not Financial Advice. And uh, f seeing the uh, poster of the movie, you can probably guess what it's about. Yes, it really is about Dogecoin. It's also about the Dogecoin millionaire and uh, social media influencers slash financial YouTubers slash TikTokers uh, that talk about crypto stocks, etc. Um, the main focus of this one though, however, is crypto. And uh, also I wanna preface this review that there are spoilers in this review. Uh, oftentimes I don't really give too many spoilers, but this one is, is unusual because you probably already know the story. If you're watching this, you probably know the price action of Dogecoin, et cetera. So, you know, this is all stuff that happened in the past. Um, the one thing that I, that I will say is that um, these kind of documentaries really give an inside look onto our current sort of markets, uh, who are the participants and sort of what the youth culture is up to these days. Um, recently, guys, if, if, if you know, you can follow the channel, I've been recommending this uh, documentary also, uh, BitCon. This is on Netflix. I would say uh, this is the better documentary, but this one is not bad by any stretch. I actually enjoyed it. Um, but obviously, I have a, a sort of a, a inside or, or feelings or, or sort of niche uh, like for this kind of stuff. So, but I would say definitely see this one first. And if you have you know more interest in this space, just kind of knowing how this world works, check this one out as well. Um, the, the main subject is the Dogecoin millionaire dude. His name is uh, Glober. I said you said his name is Con Contest Soto. And um, you can see the headline. This is an old New York Times article. It says uh, he's the Doge. He's a Dogecoin millionaire, and he's not selling. And uh, that headline right there captures sort of uh, what we're talking about. Essentially, um, he was uh, the pivotal pumper along with Elon Musk. So I don't want to leave out Elon Musk of, of Dogecoin. And um, he had a channel and uh, essentially had this big community around Dogecoin. And it was funny because I remember the whole Dogecoin uh, uh, fiasco. Uh, it was all a joke, right? <laughs> you guys remember stuff. It was, it was like totally a joke. Uh, full disclosure, I think I made 20 bucks on Dogecoin, Dogecoin myself. Yes, I guess I could have yellowed this thing and done you know, fantastic like he did, but uh, which we'll get to actually, so there's more to the story. Um, but um, essentially kind of what he was doing this whole period was he was really, really pushing and shilling uh, Dogecoin. Um, the documentary, uh, what I really appreciate about it, it, it shows behind the scenes look of lots of things and um, how to say it it, it it was it was very sympathetic to him I, I think they left some stuff out that they could have included which i'll include with, with my review um, but it was interesting to see this different side to this guy uh, moreover though you also see a clear uh declination between like this is who he really is and this is who he is on camera which may be different things and moreover when you when you compare the documentary um this is you know this uh, actually i'll show you the documentary here so this is the documentary like here where um, you, they have the cameras there and he's like basically showing his, you know, Robin Hood account to the webcam. And then you compare that to sort of like what you saw on YouTube itself. It, it is different. And so I think, I think that is a really interesting inside look of like what people, some people, right? Many people, I guess you could say how their personality on camera is like vastly, vastly, vastly different meaning that they're totally shielding something, right? Basically, if you don't know what that means, it's just like saying how much they love something, et cetera, when it's all BS. Um, and then behind the cameras, it's different. So um, there's something I also want to mention with this guy is that he was part of Creators Agency. If you don't know, I've covered this uh, group several times on the channel. Um, they encompass many of the big finance YouTube people. You guys can see the picture of the people, but there's, there's a, a lot more in, involved with this. If you want to see my old videos on this stuff, um, please look it up because I think this would have been a really interesting thing to cover in the documentary. However, there also is the possibility that Creators Agency helped with the documentary. So I, I, that I don't know, I have no idea, but I'm saying um, Dogecoin Miller was part of this group of people. Um, I remember seeing him on the Instagram and also he too, he um, goes to various fin, uh, FinCon um, kind of events and helps people to develop financial social media stuff. So he's active in this type of space. Uh, this is the current page of the creators that they have now. Uh, also in the documentary too, they actually feature some of the creative agency people. You can see it there. Uh, Andre's there and the Graham dude's there and, and the Meet Kevin dude's there uh, because uh, Dogecoin was doing uh, stuff with them about the promoting Dogecoin especially. Um, moreover, the, the the highlight of the movie for me, and there's a lot, there's a lot of interesting stuff in this movie, was, was the, the whole uh, Elon Musk and um, Saturday Night Live appearance. And if you remember, that was essentially the peak of Dogecoin. And one of the things that, that I think they, they could have done better in the, in the documentary was show the kind of people that he's affecting when you're shilling something that's basically garbage, <laughs> which is Dogecoin, right? Um, they, they show it a bit, and I want to get into this in, in a moment, um, but uh, they could have done a little bit more even because I, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to to show as many regular people as you can. And I, I'm not really criticizing the documentary. I said you could just do more of the same because they do show regular people. So for example, um, 
This was actually his friends, which is really interesting. Um, you can see that they're all black, at least the ones that they show. And um, they, they um, him and his friends, they all want to be R&B artists slash rappers. And uh, one of the things that uh, he kept talking about is like, I'm going to get a bunch of money with Dogecoin and, and start my own, um, you know, label, record label. So I thought that was I thought that was really interesting. And kind of what this did, though, is it really captured the world that he that he lives in and sort of the hopes and dreams that he wants and the people that he hang out with, et cetera, and sort of what the crypto thing means to him. Now, remember, I, I mentioned the show more regular people thing. Now, it's always hard to find regular people to appear in these kind of documentaries because it's like, you, you got to find somebody who's willing to be on camera and they don't really benefit it per se. So uh, I'll give you an example. So this gentleman was on there and um, they actually showed his kids in documentary as well. And I, I want to bring this up because I think this is a really important point uh, that, that, you know, and, and I, I'm just going to assume that they, they mean it. And what I mean by they mean it is the people who made the documentary. Um, anytime you make anything like this, you, you make certain choices of, you know, who you interview, what questions you ask, what you show, what you don't show. And, and I will say this thing was very, very well made. Um, I, I could follow the story all the way through and I could kind of see the points they're trying to make. And they did it in, in, in subtle ways that, that I think worked very well. So what was interesting about this though is that they kept showing this father and he was trading, um, I wanna say it was Mana, which is a crypto. And I, I don't know if he had other ones, maybe he did, I, but Mana was the one he was into. And, and the documentary shows like how ridiculous it is to be in this you know altcoin stuff. And um, essentially one of the things that they, they do well is they show that his kids are always with them or often with him, that's a good way to say it. And and the point I wanna make with this is that the things that you do with your kids or the people around you, you are always a role model for people around you and they see what you're doing. And so basically the dad is gambling all the time or, or dad is, you know, dad is glued to his phone, you know, watching, you know, the, the, the prize action of this thing and, and trying to win the lottery basically. Um, and moreover, what, what, which I really appreciate about this movie and, and sort of um, one of the impetuses for me making you know, this review of it, uh, was this gentleman here and he really stood out from the other people. So like, so I'm certainly like these people are like, hey, I want to you know, have a, a, a you know, R&B record label, rap record label, et cetera. This guy's like, hey, I, I want to you know, basically you know, win as much as I can with the mana <laughs> crypto. And then and this gentleman was interesting. He was just like, hey, you know, I, I want to get Apple, Microsoft. I want to study the markets. And, and the, the one thing that really stood out to me is um, he was uh, talking to his friends and, and he was telling his friends like, yo, uh, I want to buy the apartments all around me. I want to buy the homes all around me and, and my friends will rent for me, right? So he's, he's already thinking more in terms of like real world building assets, building wealth, et cetera, and, and, and doing it in, in a much safer way. Um, and I would say, how can I say, a consistent way, not gambling, right? You're, you're investing. Uh, whereas many of the other people portrayed in, in this movie are basically all gambling. Um, this is actually something that's encouraged by people on, on social media. And one of the things they did also did very well in the show. So this is, I don't remember her name, but this is one of the people they showed. And she's like really big on, on TikTok. And uh, <laughs> she's wearing a baseball hat in this particular scene. But um, she has like multiple costumes that she wears. And part of what they were, were talking about is like, hey, you know, I, I got this whole wardrobe of costumes and I'm playing a character for people, right? That's essentially what a lot of these people are. They're actors. That's a good way to put it. Actors, shills, whatever you want to say. All these people are actors, shills, right? They all work at the same agency, et cetera. I don't know. I don't know if she works with them. Also, there's certainly a possibility, right? You contact one agency, say, hey, we're making a documentary. Can you hook us up with our, you know, influencers, et cetera. But um, yeah, they, they're, they're all in it. But uh, the, the, the point is, is that, when you watch this stuff, you have to understand that what's so important to these people is to be liked, to have subscribers, these kind of things. And moreover, it's not really about giving good advice. It's about being entertaining, right? That's why you're wearing the baseball hat, et cetera. Uh, that's why, you know, this guy is, is, you know, looks the way that he does and behaves the way that he does and, and stuff like that. And, and if you watch his old YouTube videos, which they, which they don't really show exactly uh, in the documentary, I mean, he really pushes Dogecoin. He's like, yo, diamond hands, I'm not selling, keep it forever and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And and like in the beginning when it's all going up, like they do a nice job of showing all the comments, love the guy, right? Of course they do. And then he doesn't sell at the peak, which is essentially, you know, the, the Elon Musk situation went on Saturday Live and the thing basically crashes. And then like people hate him, right? So they're still watching him, but they hate him. And then obviously they're gonna quit watching him, et cetera. But, um, Point being though, this, this social media game is, is a dangerous game with, with money because the people you're watching are more concerned about just making sure that, that you click and like them, not necessarily giving you good advice and to keep you uh, clicking and liking and watching. It's all about being entertaining 
and, and just selling your hopes and dreams. Um, one of the best scenes in the movie was when um, he basically has no money because remember this guy is, is broke because uh, he didn't sell his Dogecoin, which is kind of crazy in itself. But uh, he starts um, advertising for cereal, <laughs> for true story. And I was just like, what the heck? And so I thought that was a, a really brilliant scene in, in the show. Um, I want to mention too also, um, and this is related to current news, because uh, you, know, you want to learn from the past to understand uh, today. Um, this is this right now, uh, February 27th, 2024, headline, eToro wants to bring its trading app to Apple Vision Pro and MetaQuest headsets. And uh, essentially, if you don't know what eToro is, it's just one of these sort of newer brokerage kind of places, and I think they you know, have crypto stocks, et cetera. And uh, basically what they're saying is they're going to build an app that you can use on your headset from the Apple, and uh, you're going to be able to talk to your you know, app to, to trade you know, stocks and crypto, and you can be able to you know, do it with your hands virtually, et cetera. And, and it's like, we totally don't need that. Like, we, we totally don't. Um, but this is the world that we live in, and this is the kind of stuff that you, you do to appeal to uh, younger audience, right? You're, you're trying to appeal to, you know, these kind of audiences. Or, and he's not even that young, but just the current people who are in the market, maybe, you know, people who are watching this channel, um, you, you know, maybe this may excite you as well. Um, you know, that's up to you. For me, it's like I don't need to wear a headset to buy stocks. <laughs> that's not something I need to do. Um, however, um, this is real with, with the, this kind of, um, you know, audiences is that, for example, uh, Robinhood, so this is an older headline that says here, this is an older headline, uh, Robinhood gets rid of co confetti feature amid scrutiny over gamification of investing. And for those of you who use Robinhood, this is use what they used to do. I don't, I don't use Robinhood, so I don't know, but um, it, it's, like I said, I don't know what they do now, but this is what they used to do that is um, if you would say, you know, buy something, then they'll, they'll have like an animation on the screen, like confetti, fireworks, just basically make it like a video game. And, it, and it's very addictive for, for people. And the point I'm, I'm trying to get to is, is, is that, again, like something the way that, that Robin Hood is designed, it's not necessarily designed to keep you sane, to inform you, anything like that. It's, it's designed to keep you playing the same way that many YouTube channels are designed to keep you watching, right? Telling people that Dogecoin is awesome, obviously, is terrible advice, um, but uh, people keep watching, right? They, they like it. It's entertainment. And I want to point out something as well that um, I did a video recently. I mentioned this before, but I mentioned it again because the numbers are updated. I did a vid video recently on Caleb Hammer. And it's funny because uh, <laughs> when you read comments, these things, I just, I just laugh because it's hilarious. Um, you know, people hate me because I, cause I don't like Caleb Hammer. Um, but if you have to understand the context of this. So I have the demographics of the people who watch the Caleb Hammer video that I made. Um, uh, the large group of them are an 18 to 24. And then an even bigger group is from 25 to 34. So essentially young people. Uh, moreover, 73% uh, of these people who watched that video that I made are unsubscribed, uh, not subscribed. I say unsubscribe is not a word, but uh, not subscribed. Um, now, I want to contrast. If you contrast it to, say, a video they made recently on Warren Buffett and talking about Apple stock, take a look at the difference. Uh, 25 to 34 is only like 26% of the viewers, and uh, 18 to 24 is, is 5.2, right? Moreover, you have like people who are 55 to 64, 65 plus, 45 to 4, et cetera. And you compare that again, this is a Warren Buffett video compared to, say, a uh, Caleb Hammer video, you can see the ages. Like no one over 65 cares about Caleb Hammer. <laughs> and very few people over 55 care about Caleb Hammer. Like I don't even care about the guy to be perfectly frank. Um, but uh, young people do the same way that young people, you know, watch this guy. And, and, and if you actually just step back and think about this, like why would anyone, any same person listen to someone like this about what they should do with their money? And, and this guy, as they show in the documentary, like, like lost basically $3 million, which is crazy. Um, I, I, uh, I, it's funny cause I, I, I know I talk a lot when, when just talking about this particular thing, um, this thing, uh, really stuck, uh, 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 stuck, stuck out with me, stood with me, stays with me, stick with, stick with, stuck with me. I, I'm having time speaking, but the, the, the message of the, of the film really stayed with me. That's a good way to say it. And, uh, I, I, I think, um, you know, this sort of new world, social media, financial, uh, relationships that people have because it's, it's like a parasocial relationship you, you feel like that you know this person's your friend and if he's not selling I'm not selling either and the thing I really want to emphasize with with you with any of this kind of stuff right uh, is that take care of yourself first and um, you know what might, what might be right for this person uh, the Dogecoin millionaire uh, dude may not necessarily be right for you and um, also understand too that even if someone's handsome and you know they're they're, they're have a nice voice and they're funny um, doesn't necessarily mean they have their, your best interests at heart. And that's one of the things I want to leave you with is that oftentimes when I, when I look at like comments of why people like certain channels, they always say the same thing. Oh, I like that particular channel because that person makes really good jokes. <laughs> and, and if you think, just think about that for a moment here, 
you're watching the channel because you like the jokes. Just think about that. And, and, and if we're talking about money, that's not necessarily uh, a good uh, recipe for success. So I'll leave with that. This is the review of This Is Not Financial Advice documentary and also more deeper thoughts into the meaning of all this stuff. And I uh, appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you next video.